Porto. Porto, also known as Oporto in English, is the second largest city in Portugal after Lisbon and one of the major urban areas in southwestern Europe. The urban area of Porto, which extends beyond the administrative limits of the city, has a population of 1.4 million people and a total of 150 square miles, making it the second largest urban area in Portugal. Located along the Douro River estuary in northern Portugal, Porto is one of the oldest European centers and was proclaimed a World Heritage Site in UNESCO in 1996. Its settlement dates back many centuries when it was an outpost of the Roman Empire. It's taken the name Porto Scale, which has been referred to as a name of Portugal based on the transliteration and oral evolution from Latin. In Portuguese, the name of the city is spelled with a definite article, the O. One of Porto, Portugal's internationally famous exports, port wine, is named for Porto, since a metropolitan area, and in particular, the Adegas of Villanova de Gaia, were responsible for the production and export of fortified wine. Villanova de Gaia is located on the opposite side of Porto that gives an amazing view of the city itself. But there's another way to tell a story. I never wanted to move to Porto. I'll be honest, I didn't. When we moved there last March, and I walked through the city streets, I got lost. I got lost going to my very first hospital visit. And one day I sat down on the side of a riverbank and thought, shit, I don't even know how to ask for help. So I sat by the side of the river and I looked down and thought, it's over. And suddenly I looked to my left and I see a pair of red shoes. Veiny legs, and I smelled a very strange perfume. And I see a woman with a huge smile on her, bright red lipstick, a gorgeous orange coat, and about 80 years old. And she said, Menina, little girl, are you okay? No, I'm really not okay. And I don't even know how to tell you this in Portuguese, so I'm going to speak to you in Portuñol. Portuguese and Spanish mixed with some English. And God, I hope you understand me. And as I told her I was lost, and I told her I was frustrated and how I hated her city, and I'm really sorry, I don't mean to offend her, she smiled and she said, come with me. She reached for my hand and we walked together. I'll take you. Without an umbrella, with nothing, she guided me through the city streets. And every step of the way, she pointed. She said, look, do you see that tile? Yeah, it's chipped, but did you know my cousin made it? And do you know that my great-grandfather used to lay these tiles himself? Isn't it beautiful? Do you smell the fish in the air? Okay, sure, it's a little bit rainy. But the fish is amazing. Do you smell it? He makes the best fish in Porto. Do you see the laundry up top? In some cities, do you know it's not allowed? Here we do it and we communicate with our neighbors through our laundry. Did you know that? Did you know that every single day I walk outside and I feed the birds? Yeah, the seagulls can be annoying but they're my seagulls and I feed them and I feed the cats and I feed the stray dogs. Do you know that? No, I didn't. But suddenly I took off my glasses and I put on a new set of glasses. Suddenly Porto came alive in color and light and suddenly I felt alive. Suddenly I could walk through the streets and everything burst open in a completely different light. It wasn't gray and dreary. It was bright and colorful. Every single crevice had nature burst.
bursting from the core. I felt alive. She stopped in front of the hospital and she looked at me, and yes, she was smaller than me. <laughs> and she reached her arms up around me and she held me and she rocked me back and forth. And she said, Menina, do you know that here in Porto we take care of you foreigners? But not just you foreigners, we take care of every single person that comes to our city. Why? Because you're our guest. You're a part of us. Whether you stay for one day or 12 days, you know where to find me. I'll always be here for you. I say this story because I want you all to ask yourself a question. How are you telling your story? Are you offering statistics, numbers, names, data? Or are you speaking from the heart? Are you sharing your vulnerabilities and your stories, your weaknesses and your fears? Because I don't care what subject you're speaking about, if you truly want to connect to me, if you truly want to connect to your customer, it starts here. It takes you stepping out of your comfort zone and rewriting your story through the eyes of the person through the eyes of you. The question is, are you willing to take that step? You wouldn't be here if you weren't. Thank you.